Hi. I'm Matt Van Italy. I'm the managing partner of Canterbury Road Partners, and I'm here to tell you tonight about an idea that my team and I are working on. It's a pretty big idea that we think can make a pretty big difference in cities like Baltimore. And what we're going to do also is tell you a little bit about squirrels and starfish. Let's jump in. So you saw this picture earlier today. This is the Children's Hospital of Johns Hopkins. The topic is research institutions. All around this country, you can see examples of research institutions in bubbles. There's energy, there's excellence, there's vitality. And this is what the neighborhood looks like a few blocks away. This is in Baltimore, but I want to be clear. This is true about neighborhoods everywhere across the country. It is hard to pierce that bubble of research institutions and actually help make a contribution to the city as a whole. Should they? I think we think absolutely yes. Why? We're talking about economic development and jobs in particular, jobs and businesses. Students can stay after they graduate. There's more funding to pay for that kind of research, and it's a way for universities to give back to the cities that have done so much. So if you believe that like we do, then this is the question. How can universities bring the best of themselves to support economic development in the city? Well, let's start with what they have to offer. What assets can we use? Asset number one is money. Research institutions around this country spend $61 billion a year on research. That's about 20 billion copies of Angry Birds and HD for Space. <laughs> they also have number two ideas. 22,000 patents are available. Most importantly, though, number three, student energy. Students want to create, students want to be part of something. Now, it can be silly, like a line dance, or it can be serious, like starting businesses. Students are great entrepreneurs. They have energy, they have hunger, they have hustle. All right, so we have assets that we can use, and we have this goal of economic development near universities for our cities. How do we bring them together? Local technology transfer. Technology transfer, now it's taking ideas, from the lab and bringing them into the marketplace. Google is an example. It was a startup at Stanford University. Gatorade was too. It was created at the University of Florida. Go Gators, right? There's a couple really interesting examples of technology transfer all around the world. Here is one of my favorites. So this is from our backyard, National Cancer Institute. Um, look at this. So Fludara Gardasil squirrel-free capsicum-treated birdseed. All right. Well, let's talk about that. So scientists at the National Cancer Institute were studying capsicum. That's the stuff in peppers that makes you go ow. When they looked at it, they saw that all mammals have receptors for capsicum, but no birds do. What does this mean? If you invite birds to a party, watch the salsa. <laughs> also, if you coat bird seed with hot sauce, squirrels don't eat it. This is real. This is true. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, it's really unbelievable, but it's, it's actually really true. So, <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's true. It's really true, says the surprise squirrel. So technology transfer, it's really hard. It's absolutely really hard. But what I want to impress upon you is that you can get better at it quickly if a community wants to. Two great stories. University of Alabama, 65% increase in technology transfer in a few years. Right here at home, it's literally a story, a pr an incredible story for the rest of the world. Johns Hopkins more than doubled their performance at tech transfer from labs out quickly. Now to do it, you need to do a couple things right. One of those is finding the hidden gems. You have to take all of that innovation and figure out what's the really high value stuff. How can you do it? It's a big data problem, like so many things today. Moneyball is a great way to think about it. As many of you know, it's the story of the Oakland Athletics, that they use computer analytics, quantitative methods, to find undervalued baseball, uh, baseball players and build a pretty good baseball team. You can do the same thing with patents. It's obvious which of those two guys I was, right? Yeah, yeah, right, right. So this is us. This is what we're doing. On the top left, a jumble of patents that make no sense. And by the time you get to the bottom, we've actually sorted it and found the hidden gem. That's that green dot over there. So this is possible with work. A second example to the starfish. So our friends at Automated Serendipity, they used a computer program, took a whole bunch of problems and a whole bunch of solutions and meshed them together. One problem, lasers needed focusing. Another, brittle stars have these lenses on their arms to find predators. And literally, this is what they found brittle star lenses, which are now being tested in the lab today to actually focus laser light. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So this is what we're doing. We are Canterbury Road Partners, and we're trying to tackle this. We are a group of pioneers 
and this is our founding team who came together to try to make this work in cities around America and especially in Baltimore. We're starting startups based on technology from universities around the world uh, and around the country, of course, with students from Maryland to launch those startups. We've launched four now, we're doing 100 next year, we're bringing 200 students into entrepreneurship, and we're really gonna try to make a difference for Baltimore. Stay tuned. <laughs>